just want to take and do a short video about some table maintenance and a couple set of things that I've come up with that work well for me. So this is my Westcott Plasma Pro Series 5x10 table. This table was put into service on 8 of 2019. And so we're just uh, on its uh, three year anniversary of this table now. And uh, it has been working great. I'm very happy with it so far. So one of the things a lot of people talk about, this is a water table and this table has a bladder on it, which is down underneath here and allows me to take in, um, allow the water to take and flow down in the bladder when I'm not using it. So it slows the uh, evaporation and it makes it very easy to take and clean out my table. So a lot of people talk about uh, when to clean out or ask questions on when to clean out the table. With this style, it makes it very easy. I can take and clean out my table every single day after I finish if I want to, but realistically, I take and clean it out about once a month. I take and drain the water off, I take and allow it to completely dry, and then I can come in and scoop up, take a, pull the slats out, scoop up the big pieces, take and use a dustpan and sweep up and, and shop back the rest of it in and it keeps the table very clean and it extends the life of my plasma cutting fluid. And for the water treatment on here I use Sterling Cool. I've been using Sterling Cool almost three years now and I switched from another product and I, while the other product worked, I was looking for something that was more affordable, um, that was still safe and that's what I found Sterling Cool and it checked all the boxes for me. It's very safe. It's not like the home brews or using borax or some of these other chemicals that when you take and uh, expose these chemicals to extreme heat like borax, vaporize it, it was never intended to be uh, exposed to high UV, vaporized, high heat. It was meant to be in a, you know, in with your clothes, taken, wash them in laundry, and it was never designed to be atomized in the air. So borax has a lot of health problems and I didn't want to deal with that. I wanted something that's going to be safe, taking, I'm going to be in the, the shop working all day. So I didn't want to have any hazards other than what uh, goes along with all the other hazards of metalworking as it is. So Sterling Cool, is, it's safe. Um, it does a great job at preventing the rust and it's very affordable, much more affordable, almost half the price of what I was using before. And with this table, the way it's set up, I really don't have to um, get rid of it or take and replace it. I can continue to take and use the same Sterling Cool and just add a little bit as time goes on. As I add water, I take and add a little bit of Sterling Cool and I keep everything balanced. And I do that in a, a couple ways on here. When I check my, my Sterling Cool to make sure the concentration is still good, I'll take and, and check it a couple ways. I use pH paper. You can get this off Amazon really cheap. And same with this, this is a refractometer. You take and put a couple drops on there, you close this, you look through the viewfinder here, and it gives you a concentration. And this is a very accurate way of checking to make sure your solution is still where it needs to be to do its job. You don't want to take and put in way more than it needs because that'd be, be wasteful and, and, and more expensive than it needs to be. And you also don't want to have too little so that you want to make sure it's going to be doing its job at the correct concentration. So, uh, Sterling Cool, I believe, recommends a 2.5 on the concentration here. I keep mine at about a 3 because I tend to add water quite a bit here in Arizona. As you can tell, I'm, I'm sweating like crazy right now. Uh, we're 110 and 85% humidity right now. So, it, uh, we just had monsoons go through mm -hmm. and it's just a miserable time of year. But, high evaporation right here, so I'm adding water on a regular basis. So I use this to check and make sure that my concentration is con correct and I only add as much as I need to to keep that, that balance. So that's the ideal way of, of taking checking your concentration. The cleanup, like I said, when I take and am able to clean the table on a monthly basis and the material doesn't get um, really saturated and it allows with the bladder design and everything else when I stop cutting for the day, I take and we we'll usually let this sit for a few hours and let anything in the liquid settle out and go to the bottom of the table and then allow it to drain off slowly back into the bladder. So that leaves my contaminants and, and all the, the remnants from cutting um, drop out of solution and stay in here and it really extends the life of my Sterling Cool. When I take and fill the table back up, 
when I go to start the cutting in the morning, the, the liquid is clear, you can still see through it, it's not saturated with any type of debris, it's not a black, messy, it's, it's still a, a clear liquid that you can see through, and that tells me that the, the table is still staying very clean with the process I have going. So, like I said, this is, was just cleaned out um, uh, just a few days ago, did a little bit of cutting on uh, some badges I make here, as you can see. One of the other things I want to talk about with the, the Sterling Cool that I ran into is that when I did my last uh, change out, I noticed that the rust present preventative properties were not what I had seen before the last time I used it. And so I reached out to Sterling Cool and they went through and uh, the, the tech support with them is awesome. They're, they're scientists, they've taken, they know what they're talking about. We went through some troubleshooting things and we looked at, we came down to what is my water harvest? Well, lucky for me, I have some of the hardest water in the country right here. We, we have a water softener system on the, on the shop, the house, everything out here in Arizona in my area runs water softeners. But I wasn't softening the water that I was putting into this table. Now I was running at a 500, which is crazy high for, for hardness. And we, we took and looked at everything and I did a, a complete drain and clean out and then I started fresh again and I used RO water and so what I did is I got a 275 gallon tote and went down to one of the local uh, water fill up places we have a lot of them around here and it was 40 something dollars for 275 gallons of RO water uh, measured their RO water it was reading zero on the TDS meter which no no total dissolved solids it's really very good quality RO water. I put that in here, I added my Sterling Cool in, and everything was perfect. It really made a big difference for me. Most places are not gonna run into this problem of having water that hard and having a, a problem with it not working as well. I mean, it did, did work, but it just wasn't as perfect as, as I had before. So if you run into a problem like that, where you're seeing it, check your water hardness in your area, and if it's very hard, Think about going to RO water. And um, for refilling it, I take in my empty containers of Sterling Cool. I take and just go down there and it's 25 cent, no, a um, dollar to take and fill up a five gallon pail of RO water. So really not bad at all. I take and keep a few on hand and uh, I can take and fill up and add RO water so I'm not putting that hardness back into when I, when I refill the, the table from time to time. So that's one thing that, that worked for me. If you run into that or nosy problems, check your water hardness and it, it may be the issue. So one of the other things that I want to talk about is on the table, when you're squaring up material, um, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Everybody's kind of got their own system and this is what, what I did. So this rail across here is some inch and a half, inch and a half uh, aluminum angle. And I got this on here kind of as a, a rub rail and also a point to take in reference off of. So I took and put uh, 3M VHB tape on the back side of this angle. I took and brought my gantry down and squared it up with this material and made sure that the offset was perfectly square from this side to this side on the table. And so it's a perfectly square reference point. So if I have material, I can bring it right up to this and I square and reference off it, and it's square to the gantry and my, my cutting. Now, obviously, I wouldn't want to start right here. I'd take and, and cut into the table. It wouldn't allow you to because it references back, but I would lose this little bit of material here. So what I do instead is I take a, a piece of angle. It's just taken scrap, and I can take and reference, put it in here, take and slide this over here. I get tight on that corner. I take and adjust this over on this side, get tight there, double check that I'm still in line there. So now I squared it from this point here, this point here, and I know that now I am square to the gantry, everything's set. I can t put my start point right over here, zero, zero, and run off of it. And if I'm cutting right to the edge of a sheet, I know that that far corner over there I'm not gonna run off the, the sheet or have any issues because it, it's gonna stay perfectly square. One other thing I did is I took and cut a piece of aluminum 
and I took and have a little center punched hole. Really hard to see, but it's it's there. And what I do with this piece, I set this in my my corner over here, and then I have a red dot laser on the gantry. So I drive the gantry down, and I take and turn on the laser, and my exact corner for torch and the laser line up with this with this dot that I've center punched on there. So when I line up the laser with the center punch dot, I know that the torch is going to, when it fires, it's going to be right at this corner for my zero, zero mark. Now, where this comes into play is if for some reason something happens with the table, the power goes out, um, we it, it loses its place, somebody bumps it, something happens, and we want to take in reference and get back to the exact zero point so I could finish this piece without losing it. So I don't want to take it, if I'm in the middle of this, this cutting and something taking catastrophic happens, I want to be able to, to reset and get back to my zero and resume cutting. So, if you were to take and rehome the table, you could come back here, rehome it, and it would take and establish this point, but that's not the same as your starting point for this piece of material. So if this piece of material got shoved over here and you had it out there, how would you take and be able to reset and be able to start cutting perfectly where you left off? So I, I come in here, I take and get this, this set here to here to where it is. So I know it's square with the gantry again. And now it could have shifted. If we wanted to shift this all the way over, we know it wasn't wasn't there before, but I can take and get this referenced in so I know I'm perfectly square, locked in there. Mm -hmm. Bring my template over. I can set that in the corner, and then I can come in with my laser that's mounted to the gantry. I can put it on this dot, and I can establish my exact zero, zero start point again, even though this piece moved, it could move anywhere on the table and I can establish my zero, zero. I can take and find that, that uh, point where it left off or where the problem happened and I can start over and I can take in and cut again without turning this whole thing into scrap if something uh, had happened during the cut. I've used it many times now um, for various reasons that uh, ran into problems, something happened, and the, the sheet got moved, whatever it may be, and I was able to reestablish my point and not lose all the material that I had been, been cutting. Some of these badges I do are really intricate, take quite a long time to cut, and as you know, material is ridiculously expensive um, these days, so this is able to save and, and not turn this whole thing into to waste. So those are just a couple things I want to take in and show you. Um, if you guys have any questions on anything that I showed you here, you can take in and hit me up in the comments. I'll do my best to answer everything. Please like and subscribe. That really helps uh, my videos get the, the word out there and uh, encourages me to make some more. And if you have some videos or questions out there that you'd like to see me make, let me know. And uh, check out my other videos that are out there. Thanks for watching. Bye.